The Lord, the God of ages, calls us. This is holy ground. The Lord, the great I am, is with us. Let us worship God. Who are we to judge one another? We all stand before the judgment of God, so trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. God, our Redeemer, we confess that we remain captivated by sin. We seek profit and pleasure in the world, but you offer us a greater glory. We strive to preserve our way of life, but you call us to give our lives away. Forgive us. Liberate us. Let us be no longer bound by sin, but released, restored, set free to worship and serve you in freedom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus Christ did not come into the world to condemn it, but that we might have new life through him. Hear the good news of the gospel. Through the power of Jesus Christ, and made known to us in the waters of baptism that reconcile us to God and to neighbor, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Hear now the word of God. Moses was keeping the flock of his brother-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. 
When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me, and I have seen now how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Set your grace before my eyes. I love your truth. I hate their lies. I'll take no part with a deceiver. No, I hate the way that unbelievers go.
standing here within your truth Vindicate me, O oh Lord I have walked in my integrity I'm holding fast to you, my God Vindicate me, O oh Lord Please be gracious and deliver me I'm standing here within your truth ah, Epistle comes from Romans 12, 9 to 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, and bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, 
lost in his love This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior The New Testament reading is Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. Listen to and for the word of our Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The church where I used to work had a preschool right down the hall from my office. And it was one of my great joys that whenever I had a few minutes of downtime, I could walk down the hallway and sing songs or read books with them or play games with the children and it always brightened my day. And I remember one day, I wandered outside to find the children on the playground. And they were beginning to run around and the teachers looked a little bit frazzled and I hadn't been with them all day so they weren't quite on, at my stress level yet and so I offered to play a game. And I suggested follow the leader. The kids all knew this game and they immediately fell into line and followed me around the playground as I patted my head and rubbed my tummy and marched with high knees. And they eagerly did everything that I did. And then I went to the back of the line and the child who was right behind me then got to assume the position of leader. So then that child did the same, led the children around the, around the playground, doing funny things and expecting everyone to follow. And they did, although not quite as eagerly as they followed me. And then I had that child go to the back of the line, and the next one in line became the leader. And now they start to realize we're going in order. And now they start to get a little frustrated because the ones in the back of the line are wondering if they're ever going to even going to get a turn to be the leader. And the ones in the front that are coming up on their turn soon are complaining that the leader is taking too long. And the ones in the middle who aren't really sure if they'll get a turn or not are complaining that we already did those things. We already patted our head. We already rubbed our tummy. Try something new. It's no surprise that preschoolers have a hard time taking direction. After all, pretty much everything in a preschooler's life is handed to them. They're told what they can and cannot do and when they can, can and cannot do it. Their amount of choices they get to make are pretty limited. So it doesn't surprise me that the opportunity for a little bit of leadership can go to their head pretty quickly. 
But although we consider that a childish trait, I'm not so sure that we really ever outgrow it. After all, even as adults, isn't it more appealing to be the leader than the follower? Don't we put more status on the one who's in charge, the leader of the pack, rather than the humble followers? An Amazon search of books with the word leader in the title yields more than 100,000 books, and I suspect it's significantly more, but the counter maxes out at 100,000. But I then, then did the same search with the word follower, and fewer than 3,000 books popped up with the word follower in the title. I guess we're not searching for ways to be better followers. We're all looking for a way to be a better leader, a more effective leader, a stronger leader, a more well-respected leader. We're not looking to be followers. That's not a trait that our society holds up as valuable. But scripture does. Our scripture this morning is a tough passage for our poor disciples as Jesus begins to tell them some of what is going to happen to him. And Peter is horrified by the idea, God forbid it, Lord. This should not happen. This cannot happen. See, the problem is, this isn't the Messiah that they were expecting. They're just now figuring out who this guy is. In fact, just later in the same passage, Peter proclaims that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Just verses away, Peter is right on the brink of this discovery. This can't be. The Messiah. Surely the Messiah wouldn't let something like this happen. The Messiah would be powerful. But this Messiah is humble. This Messiah predicts his own death at the hands of other leaders who are more power hungry. And this Messiah asks us to follow him anyway. Now, I admit, I don't always want to be the leader. It's nice. I mean, as the pastor of a church, clearly I like to be in the leadership position. As the mother of four children, I like to be the leader of our household activities. But there are plenty of areas where I like to follow someone who knows what they're doing. There are plenty of areas where I admittedly am no expert. I'm not very good at it. I don't enjoy it. And it's good to have someone in charge. But in moments like that, I'm looking for a leader who is powerful. I'm looking for a leader who knows exactly what is happening and is leading us in a positive direction. I am not looking for a leader who is walking toward a cross, prepared to give himself up to crucifixion. That is not the kind of leader that I look for in, a, in our, my daily life. And yet, Scripture asks us to pick up our crosses and follow him. It's counterintuitive to what society tells us. Society tells us that we ought to follow a leader who's on his way to great things, moving his way up in the corporate ladder, working her way towards the Oval Office, trying and succeeding in wonderful ways, bringing about positive change. 
We want leaders whom society calls leaders. And yet Jesus turns everything upside down. Jesus who doesn't seem to value material things. Jesus who seems disinterested in power and fame. Jesus who is concerned with the lost and the least. This Jesus wants us to follow him. And so I get it. I get it. It's really, really hard because we don't get to be in charge and we're not following a leader who walks in the way that the world teaches us is most respectable. And yet scripture still says we pick up our crosses and follow. We can make a hundred excuses. This cross is so heavy. It's full of splinters and it hurts to carry it. And yet, Jesus asks us to follow anyway. And so what does that mean for us? It means that we put aside concerns for ourselves. It means that we put aside all of the things that the world tells us we ought to be seeking. And instead we turn our eyes toward Jesus Christ. That we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ and follow in his ways. That we feed the hungry. That we lift up those the world pushes down, that we free the oppressed, that we seek justice for all. Very often, this means we have to sacrifice. And that is exactly what it means to pick up our cross. It means that we sacrifice a little bit of our own comfort so that others can survive. So that others can taste freedom. So that others may live a life of dignity. Now, I have to pause and remind you that at no time does Jesus suggest that we become doormats. I do not condone any sort of abuse. And so any time you hear the phrase, that is just your cross to bear, in reference to any kind of abuse or oppression, I reject that theology. But what is our cross to bear? Is to be generous and humble servants. That we be actively seeking justice. That we think about the most needy among us those who have the least, those who are the most oppressed and the least free, and that we act in their best interests. Whether it be how we spend our money, how we cast our votes, or how we spend our time, we're asked to pick up our cross, heavy and splintery as it might be, and follow Jesus. And so we give thanks that we do not follow a leader who worships power or fame or riches, but that we worship a leader who worships love for all, justice for all. We worship a leader who wants us all to live in God's vision of heaven. May it be so, and may it begin with us. Amen.
We worship the Lord with our offering. In the absence of a physical gathering, I invite you to go online and make your donation to the church or mail your donations to the church building. The address for both are on your screen. Thanks be to God. Friends, our life is short, and we have precious little time to gladden the hearts of those that travel the way with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And may the one triune and living God lift you up and walk with you now and forevermore. Amen.